this is the Bowtie Boss here for Fight Combat Sports News. This time I'm recapping the HBO and Showtime boxing from uh, January 25th. Now, four decent fights, not that exciting. That's why I'm watching Bloodsport instead of the replay of those four fights. First up is Showtime. Uh, Lamont Peterson had the best fight uh, of the four when he beat up Deary Jean exactly as I had predicted he would. Jean came out with speed and a, and a little bit of uh, snapping punches at first, but he really doesn't have the power to hold off of Lamont Peterson, who's a very large, light, um, light welterweight. He's probably going to be a welterweight very soon, but he's a big guy. He landed some huge body punches, and every time Jean landed something, Peterson was right back on top of him. Probably could have stopped him if he kept on going to the body, but he tried to attack that head a little too much, even at one point telling his corner, Hey, I'm going to go out here and get this guy if he makes another mistake. Uh, next up was Jermel Charlo versus Gabe Rosado. Now, I was looking for some kind of strange draw to happen in this fight, even though I felt that Charlo was going to win. Uh, bet a couple bucks on Charlo to win. And, and the thing about Gabe Rosado, man, he's a real hard luck fighter. I mean, he's got uh, you know a handful of losses on his record, all against guys who are current or future champions at this point in his career and the, the drop down in weight just did nothing for him. He goes in against Charlo who, you know, as I mentioned, is the better of the two twin brothers and he's going to be a, a title fight kind of guy very soon and he's going to win. I, I actually think that this kid beats, um, you know, beats uh, uh, Alvarez, he beats uh, Carlos Molina. I think he's going to beat most of these junior middleweights. Um, and probably move up to middleweight at some point. His brother, I think, is in a very similar boat, although not as good as Jermel is. Uh, for Gabe Rosado, where does he go from here? You know, it sucks. Uh, he, his eye cuts every single time. He's going to have to take some time off. Going to go have to see a plastic surgeon. Probably the guy that Arturo Gatti used to go to. I mean, he had so much damage around his eyes. How do you get past that? Uh, moving on over to HBO, Mikey Garcia versus Juan Carlos Burgos. I was looking for a closer fight, but again, I was looking for Mikey Garcia to easily win this thing, just albeit by a tougher manner. Uh, Max Kellerman has something that I think is just, it, it, it hits the nail on the head, something that happens with Guillermo Rigondeau a lot, something that happens with, uh, happens with Andre Ward a lot too. And while these guys all hit hard, they're not concussive hitters. They, they don't knock people out with one shot. But what Mikey Garcia did to Burgos was discipline him. That's, that's Max Kellerman's term and it just fits here perfectly. He instilled discipline into the guy standing across from him. He said, if you get aggressive, I'm going to change your life. If you stay on the outside, hey, we can write this unspoken agreement and I'll just beat on you for 12 rounds. Call it a day, go collect your paycheck and go home. Doesn't make for an exciting fight and it's not Mikey Garcia's fault. It's just that snapping power that he has without being concussive. He's not that guy that's going to drill somebody and put them away. He's going to drill them and then scare them. That's what Andre Ward does. That's what Guillermo Rigondeaux does. And unfortunately for Mikey Garcia, you are going to see his knockouts kind of fall off the map. He's got his next fight coming up, hopefully against uh, Yuriorkis Gamboa. And I think he's going to beat Gamboa basically by the same way. He's going to train him early. Do not get crazy. Don't come in here and try to think you're going to knock me out one shot because it's going to hurt. Uh, then we had Brian Jennings knocking out uh, Artur Spilska. I thought it was going to be a decision. I mean, he knocked him out almost at the, at the tail end of this thing. And, um, I mean, it was a tough fight. You know, it happened exactly how, as I thought it would. Jennings was just too strong, and he's too much of a dog for a guy like Spilska, who's good, but just not at that level. Again, Brian Jennings, where he's going to run into that problem is when he fights those massive heavyweights, those Klitschko's, those 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 300 pound, you know, Tyson Fury, I think, would kill Jennings. Uh, and it's no knock against Jennings, man. I'm telling you, he's just not big enough or he's not schooled enough. It's not only about size. I know a, a more explosive punching guy would have a much better chance against those bigger dudes, but Jennings doesn't hit hard enough. He hits sharp. Not hard. So again, um, Bowtie Boss was almost perfect as far as the boxing weekend went. And I feel uh, if anybody wants to challenge me on, on picking these fights, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or on my email. And this is the Bowtie Boss here for Fight Combat Sports Network.